Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from the Overclocker magazine. Today I have for you the XPG Lanza DDR5-5200 CL38 kit. As you can tell from just the name, this is an entry level kit. Of course it's not 4800, but it would not surprise you to find out that it uses the exact same ICs that many of the 4800 kits use. In fact, I remember when Z690 came out earlier last year, the memory that I received was uh, Kingston Fury or Beast, something of that nature, but it also had the same Micron ICs. So your expectations here should already be set that you're looking at a memory kit that will probably top out about 5600 or just under that. But anyway, let's not get ahead of ourselves. The important thing that you need to know first of all and above all things is that this memory retails for around 3700 or at least that's the last price I saw at Progenix. Titan Ice, which usually carries a lot of the XPG and A data products, was actually selling this for a little bit more. So if you are looking to buy this memory kit, consider Progenix first, and if you cannot find it there, then maybe go to Titan Ice. However, if you are on a tight budget and feeling like you cannot stretch and get to 3,730 or something like that, you can actually buy a single stick that's 1,800 or just a little bit above that. With that said, what you are looking at here is a memory kit that is offering something that is a little bit better than the 4,800 that you get, but actually costs the same as many of the 4,800 kits on the market. And that should be expected because again, it's likely the same Micron IC as you see on this XPG kit right here. Now, XMP performance is what you would expect and it's in line with many of the other CL38-5200 kits. But I will put to you that if you stay at 5200 but actually tighten even the primary settings like 34, 39, 38 or something of that nature, you are actually going to get better performance than you would when just going to 5400 and using something like CL40, which is what I had to do. I ended up using CL40-5400 just to show you how this memory can overclock, but realistically, if you are after performance, you would want to stick with 5200 and CL34. At least that's what I found with this particular kit. And as a result of that, the best performance you're going to get here is CL34-5200, but we'll get to the performance at a later point. Right now, let's just talk about what this memory looks like. Visually, I was not expecting to be this moved by this Lancer kit. Visually, this memory looks really good. Actually, it looks the piano black works for me. It absolutely does. If I'm going to have a memory kit without any RGB, I want it to look something like this. It just looks so elegant. The black on black with the subtle hints of silver, gray, or white. What do you call it? But either way, it works for me. So out the box, you are looking at CL3838 38 at 1.25 volts. Nothing spectacular there. In fact, if you look at the performance out the box, it's better than 4800, but it's nothing to write home about. However, if you put in the time to actually tune the memory, as I said, to CL34 and tune the sub timings and the tertiary timings, you get significantly better performance. In Hitman, from XMP, that's CL38-5200, all the way to a tuned CL34-5200 still, the average frame rate jumps from 167 frames per second to over 180. That's a massive jump. And you would not expect that given that you are looking at the same frequency, but it does speak to the value of tuning the memory. That's not all. If you go to Troy, right, uh, the game, of course, you are looking at an average frame rate at XMP of 202 going all the way to 214 when tuned. Again, this is a huge difference. Yes, I know it's at 1080p and maybe people are not are playing a higher resolution than that where this difference would not be as big. But if you are playing 1080p, this will make a difference for you. And it actually does speak to just the value of tuning memory once again. The last game that we'll look at is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is traditionally very sensitive to CPU efficiency or memory tuning. And once again, you see the same thing here. In fact, the difference here is quite staggering. I went from 235 frames per second all the way to 286 frames per second. I had to double check this because I wasn't sure. I was like, this is too big a difference. But lo and behold, it actually is true. Just speaking to the power of tuning 
your memory, particularly this Lancer DDR5 5200 kit. The synthetic tests, they all show the same thing as well. Of particular interest to me is the Geekbench 3 memory subscore, where I gained over a thousand points going from XMP to the tuned memory settings. I mean, really, there's not much more I can say about that. Definitely tune this memory if you can. And as you can see, even if you are not going to tune your memory, just going to 5400, despite it being CL40, will yield you better performance. Overall, the value proposition of this memory is quite high. I understand that uh, I think 13th Gen Core requires or at least is rated for DDR5-5600. But with that said, I am aware or have been told by people that the reason that we don't get such high DRAM frequencies right now is be simply because 12th gen IMC isn't as good as the 13th gen one. So you should necessarily expect to see higher frequencies even from existing kids when you just move to Z790 and the matching CPUs, right? That's 13th gen. But we'll revisit this notion when the 13th gen core CPUs are released later on. Is it this month or next month? Some, I think it's next month. Yeah, it should be next month. Either way, if you are in the market looking for an affordable DRAM kit that definitely looks the part and one that if you're willing to put the time into will yield you massive performance gains, at least versus 4800 and XMP, then look no further than this kit. Anyway, with that said, remember to share, like, subscribe if you want, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Take care and peace.